Hello, welcome to MANA. I'm Lori Johnson. It's been a while, but I'm glad to post again. I wanted to really do my post today, um, basically re-giving a talk that I gave this past Sunday. And it was based upon a talk given by Elder William K. Jackson of the 70 in the October 2020 General Conference called The Culture of Christ. And as I originally read through Elder Jackson's talk, my first thought was about the culture of the church. And that culture has certainly changed over the years, and, and especially in my lifetime, I can see so many changes. Even just in the way that we schedule church. For example, um, I used to go to primary on a weekday after school. Um, also, Sunday school was held on a Sunday morning, and I think it was about an hour long from what I remember, but it included like an opening exercises, um, we had the sacrament pass during Sunday school, and then we had a class time. And then we went home for a few hours and maybe had lunch or something like that, and then we came back in the afternoon and had a 90-minute sacrament meeting where again we partook of the sacrament. That's just a change that I've seen in my life. It was when I was in high school, then that it was changed to what we called at that time the three-hour block. In other words, all, all the meetings on Sunday in a three-hour session. And now even just recently, we can look and see the change of having just two hours of meetings on, on Sunday. So the, the culture of the church has certainly changed over the years. Part of that has been as the church has become more global and some of those time constraint changes needed to be made. But there are still things in the culture of the church that are the same or, or that are unique at least for us as, as a people and as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. For example, words that we use, um, ward and stake, they mean something specific to us. They might, someone looking from the outside in might might not have a, have a completely different definition of those two words. But think of other phrases as well, the word of wisdom, fast offerings. Those have specific and special meanings to us and, and are part of our culture. Now, despite these items that I've kind of brought up about the culture of the church, Elder Jackson asks us to leave behind um, what he calls our cultural myopia and embrace something better. He calls it the greatest of all cultures that comes from the great plan of happiness authored by God and championed by Christ. He goes on to say that this culture of Christ unites rather than divides, heals rather than harms, and is inclusive, not exclusive. Now I'm big on asking why, and I, actually not why, but all kinds of questions to my Heavenly Father um, as I talk to Him each day. But um, one of my questions was, was why, you know, why, why does the culture of the church seem to be different maybe than the culture of Christ? Why this talk, for example, was given? Well, for one thing, the culture of Christ, it doesn't need to change. It's based on doctrine and principles that will remain the same. Where the church does need to change as it grows and expands throughout the world, we need to have change for growth. Um, but also I kind of, I even like wondered why, again, why this talk? Why I was supposed to give this talk? Um, what should my focus be on um, is giving of giving this talk and what direction should I go in? I, I wasn't the only speaker last Sunday who spoke on this same, the same subject. So, so for me, I needed to um, ask why, and I went to the Lord, and mostly He doesn't just give me the answer right away, but He kind of He leads me by the hand, and shows me as I as I'm studying my scriptures, as I'm studying. Uh, gospel topics and, and conference talks, he seems to make things jump out at me, become more apparent for me. And I see things in my life that suddenly 
stick out like a neon sign of God saying, this is where you need to go. This is the direction you need to go. Part of my own challenge to become is um, more like to trying to become more like my Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ is to um, eliminate the debris in my life. This is something that President Nelson spoke about in the last general conference. And so as I prayed over that, over these past almost six months now, it um, he has shown me the need to repent daily of divisive feelings, of times when I maybe was hurtful rather than being healing and especially of times when I wasn't inclusive and I may have excluded some people from my 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 life Um, also going along with that have been many many talks from the past April conference and October conference about unity For example, some of the talks that have had a great impact upon me in the past year are um, a couple by Elder Gong, Room in the Inn, and All Nations, Kindreds, and Tongues. Others were Sustainable Societies by Elder Christofferson, Hearts Knit in Righteousness and Unity by Elder Cook, and Not as the World Giveth by Elder Holland. And I probably could name almost every talk, because as I go back over many of the talks in preparation for our next general conference, I can always find something, again, something jumped out at me, a a phrase, a sentence, a paragraph that spoke about being unified. But the one talk I certainly felt like I needed to focus more on to to relate to the members of my ward was um, Hearts Knit Together by Elder Stevenson. And... I'm sure that um, that it kind of emphasizes one of the attributes of Jesus Christ. If we and you can find in this in First Nephi chapter 19 verse 9, where um, Christ is um, Nephi is explaining all the all the things that are um, that sorry all the things that Christ will experience. And this is even before Christ has lived on the earth. Um, sorry, I'm look, looking up this scripture really quickly to relate it to you. First Nephi chapter 19, verse 9. Um, so before, before Christ is even born, an angel has told Nephi this, And the world, because of their iniquity, shall judge him to be a thing of naught. Wherefore they scourge him, and he suffereth it. And they smite him, and he suffereth it. Yea, they spit upon him, and he suffereth it, because of his loving kindness and his long suffering towards the children of men. So, Elder Stevenson's talk then really emphasized loving kindness um, to be more like the Savior. You may remember this talk because it begins by um, Elder Stevenson relating a scientific study about rabbits that were being studied to um, see the effects of a high-fat diet on heart health. And he said, As expected, many of the rabbits showed a buildup of fatty deposits on the inside of their arteries. Yet this was not all. Researchers had discovered something that made little sense. Although all of the rabbits had a buildup, one group surprisingly had as much as 60% less than the others. It appeared as though they were looking at two different groups of rabbits. Elder Stevenson goes on to say that they were they tried to find out why this was happening, and it eventually led them to one researcher. And this is how she was described. She was an unusually kind and caring individual. When she fed the rabbits, she talked to them, cuddled and petted them. She couldn't help it. It was just how she was. The study was repeated and the same results were found, and eventually a book was written titled The Rabbit Effect, and it spoke about how kindness can have such an influence on our physical health. Well, Elder Stevenson then goes on to talk about not only our physical health, but our our mental, emotional, and specifically spiritual health as well. Elder Stevenson, um, in his talk, spoke to the primary children, the youth, the adults, and had special messages for each one. 
But going then back just to what he said to the youth, um, this apostle Jesus Christ spoke about cyberbullying. And he said, Clearly the adversary is using this to hurt your generation. There is no place for this in your cyberspace, neighborhoods, schools, quorums, or classes. Please do all you can to make these places kinder and safer. If you passively observe or participate in any of this, I know of no better advice than that previously given by Elder Dieter F. Uchtdorf. And then he quotes Elder Uchtdorf. When it comes to hating, gossiping, ignoring, ridiculing, holding grudges, or wanting to cause harm, please apply the following. Stop it. Then Elder Stevenson continues, Did you hear that? Stop it. As you extend yourself with kindness, care, and compassion, even digitally, I promise that you will lift up arms that hang down and will heal hearts. Then Elder Stevenson goes on to counsel the adults. We have a primary responsibility to set a tone and be role models of kindness, inclusion, and civility, to teach Christ-like behavior to the rising generation in what we say and how we act. It is especially important as we observe a marked societal shift toward division in politics, social class, and nearly every other man-made distinction. Now here again, Elder Stevenson quotes another member of the Quorum of the Twelve. And I've learned over the years to really pay attention when this happens. I'm getting a second witness to what another apostle has said. This was President Russell M. Or M. Russell Ballard, who said, Occasionally I hear of members offending those of other faiths by overlooking them and leaving them out. This can occur especially in communities where our members are the majority. I have heard about narrow-minded parents who tell children that they cannot play with a particular child in the neighborhood simply because his or her family does not belong to our church. This kind of behavior is not in keeping with the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. I cannot comprehend why any member of the church would allow these kinds of things to happen. I have never heard the members of the ch this church urged to be anything but loving, kind, tolerant, and benevolent to our friends and neighbors of other faiths. Then Elder Stevenson goes on himself to finish counseling the adults of the church. The Lord expects us to teach that inclusion is a positive means toward unity and that exclusion leads to division. As followers of Jesus Christ, we are dismayed when we hear of how children of God are mistreated based on their race. We have been heartbroken to hear of recent attacks on people who are black, Asian, Latino, or of any other group. Prejudice, racial tension, or violence should never have any place in our neighborhoods, communities, or within the church. Let each of us, no matter our age, Strive to be our best. I feel like Elder Stevenson is urging all of us to be unusually kind and caring so that our church culture can better match the culture of Christ. Part of our family's journey of growth included Carl's 20 years in the Air Force, and that gave us a lot of opportunities and experience to live in different cultures and be, be with different people. Um, in the words we were in, because they were often, because well, they were always, wards that included people who were in the military. I got to be part of many Relief Society activities that were like, are considered getting to know you activities. And I remember one specific time in a ward where um, we were paired with di different sisters and we were each given a paper with like, um, three things on it. We we're supposed to write three three ways that we were similar with this other sister who was may maybe sitting across from us. Now this particular one, the sister that I was paired up with at this one point, um, she and I had already served together in music callings. She had been the board choir director and I had played the piano for her. She was also the mother of sons like I am. And, but this sister was also like very athletic, very energetic, very outgoing. 
um, much more than me. <laughs> so the first thing we wrote down is that we were both mother's sons. And then the sister asked me, well, do you go out and play like football and baseball and basketball with your boys? And, and I said, oh, uh, no, I'm more of the um, read books, watch movies. Uh, we do a lot of homework together. I was in graduate school at the time, so we spent a lot of evenings doing that as a family. Um, and then she said, well, then we don't really have anything else in common, do we? And I just remember looking at her like, well, what about music? And then she said, oh yeah, I forgot. Um, I think sometimes we forget how much we really have in common. The fact that we are trying, trying to be um, part, good members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints the fact that we want God, the Father, to be our Father, to be our Heavenly Father, the fact that we're trying to be more like Jesus, and probably the most important way that we're similar is that we all are beloved sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father. There are so many more reasons to be united rather than divided. There are so many more reasons for us to be unusually kind and caring to each other. Living here in this fallen world, we're going to invariably be hurt by other people. And um, it might happen accidentally. It might happen on purpose. Um, even if we feel like we've been showing that Christ-like attribute of loving kindness, the culture of Christ includes the teachings found in Matthew chapter 18 and you can just even look at the heading to this chapter the very first thing it says is Jesus explains how we are to tr to treat our offending brethren we are going to be offended in this world but then in verses 21 and 22 teachings we should always remember then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? I'm sure Peter thought that was a lot. Can you imagine someone hurting you seven times in a row? And so Peter thought, okay, I, I can forgive seven times, right? That, that's a lot. But Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. All of us are on our unique journeys to the celestial kingdom. I need God's grace and forgiveness every day as I try to repent of those times when I haven't been so unusually kind and caring. I need to grant grace and forgiveness to my brothers and sisters who are traveling their own unique paths. My path is made better by your kindness, and I need to do the same for your journey. Elder Jackson reminds us that the culture of Christ is our original culture. It dates back to our pre-mortal existence. I can't help but think about that pre-mortal time when we were all together. I imagine that we made promises to each other, promises to help each other and love each other and get back to our Heavenly Father. So much of the divi divisiveness we see in our world and on social media these days threatens the fulfillment of those promises. I have felt the need in my own life to be more kind to all my brothers and sisters so many of them are hurting right now. As I prepared this message, I kept thinking about what my ward and my neighborhood would be like if each of us were more unusually kind and caring. That would be a beautiful place to live. I'm, in conclusion, I am thankful for the precious and eternal gift of the Atonement of Jesus Christ. 
His example of love took him to Gethsemane and then Calvary and the tomb. It shows me that I still have a ways to go to be like him. But it also gives me hope. Hope in the promise of repentance and forgiveness and growth in this life. And eventually the promise of perfection. Until then, I am committing to follow Christ's example of loving kindness. I want to be part of the culture of, Je the culture of Christ. And I leave that with all of you and each of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's my manna for this time. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.